Hello and Assalamu Alaikum. I am Muhammad Usama and the topic I am presenting to you is liquid adsorption based dehumidification. This is a case of simultaneous heat and mass transfer and significant industrial and academic research has gone into the subject. Desiccant technology has been used for air conditioning for a century now, particularly for drying and dehumidification of gases in industrial applications. It is very attractive to industries that produce waste heat, since this technology requires heat input for its full process. But before we dive deep into the use of liquid desiccants, let us zoom out and get a hold of what exactly this thing is. Desiccants are materials that are so hydrophilic that they are able to absorb moisture from air. These desiccant materials are used to dehumidify air, but once they have absorbed moisture from a system or from a room, the absorbed moisture needs to be removed. This is where solar heat, waste industrial heat or heat from any other source would be used to drive the moisture out of the desiccant and into the environment. This is called regeneration which would dry the desiccant again so that it can be used for dehumidification and the process can be repeated again and again and again. Desiccant materials are divided into solids and liquids. Solid desiccants are used by creating layers of silica or alumina and passing air through them, while liquid desiccants are used by creating solutions of salts like lithium chloride or calcium chloride. The former offering lower performance but in a compact system and the latter delivering excellent performance in a bulkier system. So now that we got the basics right, let's dive into how and why liquid desiccant adsorption works. See, nature has a way of balancing itself, from decaying suns to vapors leaving a hot cup of tea, from a bodybuilder eating at a surplus to gain muscle, to the fans of a computer transferring heat from one place to another. Everything seems to move towards reducing a difference between two properties. As Eunice Angel would put it excellently, whenever there is an imbalance of a commodity in a medium, nature tends to redistribute it. This idea is the foundation for the second law of thermodynamics and a contextual definition of entropy. The driving force between change in nature is a difference in some sort of concentration of some property. That property happens to be vapor pressure in case of adsorption systems. A simple drop of desiccant solution in water has a certain vapor pressure. Air at a certain temperature and relative humidity also has a certain vapor pressure. It just so happens that at most conditions, the vapor pressure of the desiccant solution is lower than that of the air. A vapor pressure difference, a difference of properties has been created and the system must now balance itself. So the air starts transferring some of its water vapor to the desiccant solution. The solution gets diluted and the air gets dehumidified as a result until the point that the vapor pressure difference is eliminated and the process stops. But there is a catch. A salt solution's vapor pressure does not only depend on its concentration, it also depends on temperature so the system would naturally raise the temperature of the solution as it absorbs more and more moisture, making the process exothermic. Note that by the same token, evaporative cooling is an endothermic process because vapor transfers from liquid to air by absorbing latent heat of vaporization. As the desiccant solution gets warmer by generating heat, some of the heat is transferred to air as well. This is as a result of convective and diffusive heat transfer. This heat transfer is considered undesirable in refrigeration and air conditioning applications. You don't want to heat up air on a hot and humid summer day. And now we know exactly what happens when a desiccant solution comes in contact with air and how it dehumidifies and as a side effect heats air as well. We'll get into dealing with the side effect later but let's first visualize how a setup of liquid desiccant system looks like. Common practical uses of desiccant based dehumidification involve cooling towers. A chilled concentrated solution is sprayed at the top of the tower and interacted with air. The air leaves at a slightly higher temperature but drastically reduced humidity while the desiccant solution leaves at a high temperature and low concentration, essentially diluted. This solution would then have to be regenerated and cooled by removing the absorbed moisture and generated heat, as explained already. Let's get back to digging deeper into the dehumidifier.
You may be familiar with the fact that there is a minimum temperature achievable by direct evaporation called the wet bulb temperature. Similarly, there is a minimum humidity achievable by simple desiccation that appears at the brine bulb temperature, where the solution and air have the same vapor pressure. But if we prevent the desiccant solution from getting warmer, we can slow down the increase in its vapor pressure as it would now depend only on its concentration, and the solution would now be able to absorb a lot more moisture. This means that we need to remove the heat generated during dehumidification. Removing this heat would not only increase the solution's ability to absorb moisture, but it would also solve the side effect that we were previously talking about. If there is no temperature difference, there is no convection or diffusion, and the air will not get any warmer. This heat removal can simply be achieved by using an intercooler or coolant conditioner. A number of methods can be used to do that, such as simple cooling coils, multiple parallel tubes, and fin tube heat exchangers. Oh, and remember that we needed to regenerate our dust again. Guess what? We can use this heat to do that. We will only need a very small amount of additional heat after this. So what's next? Where is this technology going? How does it compare to its alternatives? Will it ever catch up to vapor compression systems? Well, recently, researchers have started incorporating heat pumps to transfer heat from dehumidifier to the regenerator, achieving very high coefficients of performance. Excessive research is focused on developing artificial desiccants and mixtures of different desiccants that have better dehumidification capability and are non-corrosive to equipment such as pumps and heat exchangers used in the system. Tetraethyl glycol mixed with lithium chloride and calcium chloride significantly increases performance but doesn't solve the problem of corrosion. However, a composite desiccant developed by confining salts to porous adsorbents improves performance, reduces size, and bypasses the corrosive equipment altogether. Beefreeze, a Pakistani company, is developing desiccant-based systems with 100% waste heat recovery, increasing the coefficient of performance of the system by an expected value of 1.5 by making the process of regeneration essentially free. This technology has gained significant traction in the past few years and considering the growth and progress being made right now, perhaps it is only a matter of time before desiccant systems take over the air conditioning and refrigeration industry entirely. It's only a matter of time. Thank you.